being able to be attract into our lives what it is that we'd like to attract into our lives boils down to a formula that I'd like to share with you here this evening. And this formula is one that everyone that I know who is able to get things into their life practices this. I call it the four reallys. All right? So that what you really, 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 really want, you will get. And these four reallys stand, each of them stands for something. And if you look at people who are good at, some people call them lucky, some people call them highly spiritual, whatever it might be, but they are good at getting what they want in their lives. And here are the four reallys. The first one says, I wish. So what you really wish for, everything that you'd like to get into your life starts with a wish. It's a thought. I wish I could get that job. I wish I could get that promotion. I wish I could lose weight. I wish I could get rid of that addiction that I have. I wish I could, whatever, it's a wish. So what you have to start with a wish. The second really stands for what you desire. What you really wish and desire. And the difference between what you wish for and desire is in what I call asking. Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. It's not empty words. Be willing to ask. When I get stuck sometimes writing and I'm just not quite sure where to go or whatever, I just leave the typewriter or I leave the yellow pad that I'm writing on. I walk over to the couch and I get into a meditation and I say, I would like some help in having this become clearer as to how to express it. And it's always there. Sometimes the phone will ring and my wife will call and she'll say, did you know that this was in the mail? And I'll say, read it to me and it'll be exactly what I needed. Sometimes it just comes in the, mo in the thing that I call an intuition or an insight, whatever it might be. The third really stands for what I intend. So now you shift away from what I wish for and ask for, and you frame it in such a way that you intend to create it. I intend to create this whatever it might be, whether it's a healing, whether it's a, a losing of weight, whether it's getting rid of an, an addiction, whether it's creating prosperity, I intend to create it. And if you notice people who are good at manifesting, they don't mince those kinds of words. I will do it. And someone will say, well, what if it doesn't work out? You say, well, then I'll just learn whatever I have to learn from it not working out. But I intend to create this in my life. There's an intention, and the intention is so powerful that you become independent of the good opinion of other people. You're not checking it out with the tribe. You're not checking it out with what everybody else out there said you should do or shouldn't do. You're saying to yourself, I intend to create it. And I often tell people, don't tell anybody else about what you want to manifest. Don't make it a big statement. Instead, keep it to yourself. And they say, why do you want to say that? I say, because the minute that you do, you invoke ego. And in quantum physics, there's a simple line that says particles themselves are not responsible for their own creation. Another way of saying that is the way St. Paul said it. That which is seen, he said, hath not come from that which doth appear. That is the source of everything over here. It's not over here. It's in this invisibleness. And once you invoke ego, you have to defend it, you have to explain it, you have to get the tribe involved in it, and before long, you've lost the capacity to manifest. It's a spiritual journey inspiration in spirit when you're inspired in spirit the fourth really stands for passion passion that is I am absolutely passionate about it and I intend to create it with that love one of the great books that one of my teachers sent to me from ancient India written like 3,000 years ago has a line in it that says, to attempt to manifest what you want without passion is like dressing up a corpse. <laughs> so you take this corpse, and you put a tuxedo on it, <laughs> and you dress it all up, and you put all the makeup on it, and you take it out into the world, and you say, now see what you can get for me. But it, basically, it's dead inside. <laughs> and if it's dead inside, that is, if it lacks passion, if you lack passion, you're not going to be able to attract it into your life. So what you wish for, ask for, intend to create, and have passion about, you'll get. You'll get it. That's the good news. The bad news is 
that what you really, 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 really don't want, you will also get. And this is one of the most difficult things for people to understand. And when you're dealing with the tribe and you're dealing with what is and what, uh, what everybody else tells you is impossible, and somebody might be watching this and say, well, that's just a lot of nonsense. I mean, you can't just put your attention on something, think about it, and have it come true. It involves a whole lot of other stuff like that. You see, here's how it works. You cannot attract thin from I hate being fat. Because if what you think about is what expands, and what you're thinking about is hating being fat, then hating being fat is what you will continue to manifest. You act upon what you think about. You cannot attract prosperity from an inner consciousness that says, I hate being poor, I despise being poor. Because if you despise being poor, if you're angry about being poor, then being angry about being poor or despising it is what you will continue to act upon and you'll be able to say, see? Now that's, it gets worse. <laughs> you cannot manifest what you want if your attention is on what is. If your attention is on what is and the circumstances of your life, that's where your thoughts are, then you will continue to create what is into your life. You've got to figure out a way to get your mental images, your energy, your attention, your higher awareness off of what is and onto what you want. And every time your thoughts are on what is, you shift it to what do I want? And it's even worse than that. <laughs> you cannot manifest what you want if your attention is on what always has been. This is the way things are. You'll hear people say it to you all the time. These are the circumstances of life. Don't you understand? This is reality. Wake up. These are the way things have always been. There's always been poor people. You're one of them. <laughs> That's just the way it is. And you watch that person and being poor continues to manifest into their life. If you keep your attention on what always has been, then what always has been is what you'll continue to manifest. As you think, so shall you be. These aren't empty words, folks. This is reality. And the worst and ugliest of all <laughs> is this. You cannot manifest what you want into your life, no matter what it is, if your attention is on what they want for you or what they expect for you, or what they tell you are your limitations or what you can do. Because if your thoughts are on what they want, you cannot put your attention on what you want. What they want will continue to manifest. And you might be in a tribe that always turns left. <laughs> and all you want to do is make a right turn. And you go to all the tribal elders and you say, look, I just want to make one right turn. And they say, wait a minute. In our tribe, we only turn left. <laughs> We've always turned left. That's the way this tribe has always been. And so they will have an emergency meeting. <laughs> and they will convene all of the elders to get you to come to your senses. Jackson Brown has, what I think, one of the great poets on our, on our planet, great singer. He has a song called For a Dancer. In there, there are words to this effect. He says, just do the steps that you've been shown by everyone you've ever known until the dance becomes your very own, which is what most of us are doing. We're doing the steps that we've been shown by everyone we've ever known, and the dance has become our very own. And later on in the song, he says something to the effect of, into a dancer you have grown from the seeds someone else has thrown. Go on ahead and throw some seeds of your own somewhere between the time you arrive and the time you go home. And then the kicker, it always gets to me when I listen to this song. He said, because in the end, there is one dance you'll do alone. And it's like letting go of this tendency to be a dancer, to be doing the steps that we've been shown by everyone we've ever known, and then it becomes our own. And then we pass it on and we pass it on. To break that chain, we have to shift our attention off of what we don't want and onto what we do want. And this goes for everything. I was at a, uh, doing a book tour up in Chicago. I get off the airplane, and a woman picks me up, and she's got a doozy, a 